Chapter 27 Victory Appropriated We have little idea of the strength that would be ours if we would connect with the source of all strength. We fall into sin again and again and think it must always be so. We cling to our infirmities as if they were something to be proud of. Christ tells us that we must set our face as a flint if we would overcome. He has borne our sins in his own body on the tree, and through the power he has given us, we may resist the world, the flesh, and the devil. Then let us not talk of our weakness and inefficiency, but of Christ and his strength. When we talk of Satan's strength, the enemy fastens his power more firmly upon us. When we talk of the power of the mighty one, the enemy is driven back. As we draw near to God, he draws near to us. Many of us fail to improve our privileges. We make a few feeble efforts to do right and then go back to our old life of sin. If we ever enter the kingdom of God, we must enter with perfect characters, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Satan works with increased activity as we near the close of time. He lays his snares unperceived by us that he may take possession of our minds. In every way, he tries to ellipse the glory of God from the soul. It rests with us to decide whether he shall control our hearts and minds or whether we shall have a place in the new earth a title to Abraham's farm. The power of God combined with human efforts has wrought out a glorious victory for us. Shall we not appreciate this? All the riches of heaven are given to us in Jesus. God would not have the confederacy of evil say that he could do more than he has done. The worlds that he has created the angels in heaven could testify that he could do no more. God has resources of power of which we as yet know nothing. And from these, he will supply us in our time of need. But our effort is ever to combine with the divine. Our intellect, our perceptive powers, all the strength of our being must be called into exercise. If we will rise to the emergency and arm ourselves like men who wait for their Lord, if we will work to overcome every defect in our characters, God will give us increased light and strength and help. Faith and duty. Faith is not feeling. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. There is a form of religion which is nothing more than selfishness. It takes pleasure in worldly enjoyment. It is satisfied with contemplating the religion of Christ and knows nothing of its saving power. Those who possess this religion regard sin lightly because they do not know Jesus, while in this condition they estimate duty very lightly. But a faithful performance of duty goes hand in hand with a right estimate of the character of God.